Hi everybody, your human anatomy, or I mean AP Biology teacher here, Mr. Poser. Uh, today we are starting uh, topic 2.5 on membrane permeability and thus continuing our unit on our structure and function of the cell uh, by discussing what's able to go through a membrane and why. So as I put in this bullet point up here, the plasma membrane separates the cell from its surroundings and allows cells to maintain a separate and stable internal environment. Now, how is it able to do that? Um, in our last video, topic 2.4, we talked about the structure of the cell membrane, how it's a fluid mosaic, um, but what most makes up most of the fluid mosaic is what's called the phospholipid bilayer. So we took a look at the phospholipid itself, which is called an amphipathic molecule, meaning that it has one polar side to it uh, called a phosphate head, um, and then it's got two nonpolar fatty acid tails. So it's got a polar side and a nonpolar side. Um, and the way that the bilayer is arranged is that the phosphate head, the polar side of the hydrophilic water-loving sides are to the outside and then the water-hating, the hydrophobic parts, are to the inside and thus it, it'll make uh, polar molecules pretty, it'll give it a hard time trying to cross the membrane. Um, but a lot of different molecules can cross the membrane through a lot of different ways, say like active transport, you can use carrier proteins, channel proteins, uh, you can use pumps, different pump proteins. Um, so there's lots of different ways for molecules to cross the plasma membrane, um, but it's not going to allow everything through super, super easily, and that's where we get to this term. And membranes are what we call selectively permeable. They allow some substances to cross more easily than others. So if you're being selective, you're choosing, right? You're choosing one thing or the other, and permeable means that is something able to go through or not. So if you're impermeable or if a layer is impermeable, then nothing can go through it. But if it's permeable, something can go through it. Membranes are selective about what they let through and what they don't. And the structure of it really lends itself to its selective permeability. Structure meets function, once again. Um, so as I just said, yeah, the membrane selective permeability is a result of its structure. Fatty acid tails in the middle keep out polar molecules. Okay, so as I was just saying, the hydrophilic parts are on the outside, but the hydrophobic parts are oriented towards the inside. So polar molecules like water are going to have a hard time crossing. They can in small amounts, but large polar molecules like, say, glucose or something like that is not going to be able to just pass through the bilayer um, by itself. Okay? It's going to need some help from one of those proteins. Um, but small nonpolar molecules can move freely across the membrane. So if we have two um, gases over here, let's say we got carbon dioxide and we got oxygen, um, these are both... Very small molecules are only two or three atoms each, and they're nonpolar. There's no one side of that molecule that has a positive charge and a, or a negative charge. They're, the charge or the electronegativity, it's called, of both of those molecules is equal. So they're both nonpolar, and they're able to pass through the bilayer by themselves through simple diffusion. Um, just moving from a high concentration to a low concentration. It's not a big deal for those small nonpolar molecules. But if we take a look at large polar molecules, like say glucose and charged molecules, they absolutely cannot pass through the fatty acid tails um, by themselves. Okay? They're okay interacting with the hydrophilic sides um, on the outside of the membrane, but they cannot get through the hydrophobic regions. One second. All right, I will call her back in just a minute. Um, but yeah, so large polar molecules and charged molecules cannot pass through. So I put some X's there. Um, all right, so these types of molecules, what they have to do to cross the membrane is they have to move through channel and transport proteins. Remember, proteins are a really, really big part of the plasma membrane. Despite, you know, the, it's mostly the phospholipid bilayer, um, there's molecules that really help other things like glucose and sodium pass through because glucose and sodium are both essential for cell function. Um, so yeah, without those membrane proteins, Nothing that nothing like that would be able to get across. All right, um, small polar and uncharged molecules can pass through in small amounts. So water, obviously, is going to be a really big topic, and the motion of water from high to low concentration, called osmosis, can be a topic that we're going to discuss a lot um, coming up here soon. So water can get through the bilayer in some amounts, okay, kind of. It's really hard for it to, you know, since this is hydrophobic, after all, it's kind of hard for water molecules to pass through um, the bilayer is particularly these um, fatty acid tails that are nonpolar. Um, but most of the time, I'm going to add something in here. Uh, water can move through 
aquaporins. And aquaporins are special channel proteins that are made for water molecules to pass through. Um, so if, you know, the cell needs more water, it can open aquaporins and water can freely flow through um, from the inside to the outside. Um, one last thing I'd like to note here is that a lot of students um, confuse a cell wall with a cell membrane. Um, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Cell walls of plant cells are made of cellulose, which is a polysaccharide. Hopefully we talked about that in the first unit. Um, and those are fibers embedded in other carbohydrates and proteins. Um, cell walls provide a structural boundary for and a barrier for some substances. Um, so if we take a look at this diagram here, uh, we have the cell wall that is made up of lots of these different uh, um, cellulose fibers along with some proteins like pectin. Um, what it's able to do is provide like a kind of structural barrier um, to the outside. And then right beneath it is the plasma membrane. All right, so plant cells have both a cell wall and a plasma membrane. Um, yeah, I believe that's what I wanted to talk about for this video. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. I got to take that phone call, um, and we'll see you later. Bye.